Oh, it's not a cut. That's a slice. Now this is a quack hook. Oh, Short wow. and into the right rough, headed to the trees. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of the Two Way Miss podcast. Thank you, as always, for listening or watching wherever and whenever you might be. We appreciate you greatly. As always, this is your this is one of your hosts, Mr. Regs, and I am joined by the good buddy Banksy in a good looking swing hard hat. How's it going, buddy? It's going well. It's going well. Good to be here. Glad to as hear. As always. It. Well, we have some exciting. Our first topic is. An exciting first moment in podcast history. You, my friend, successfully picked Scotty Scheffler to win the Players' Championship. The first ever successful prediction in the show's history. So first of all, a hearty golf clap, golf, to, golf to, clap. to you, sir. <laughs> and I mean, you know, give us your reaction. How does it feel to... You know, you this know, it, amazing accomplishment. It feels it feels great. It's been what two years almost, <laughs> almost. and we finally got one. Yep. Uh, and usually we're not even close. No, usually the close. complete opposite happens. Yeah. So uh, you know, hopefully this is uh, a good feeling coming into this season. I'm I'm feeling better about my uh, and did it convincingly. What? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, just um, kudos to you, sir. Yeah, and you know, uh, quick, quick story with Scotty Scheffler is um, I uh, he was in contention for a tournament. Oh boy, maybe a year ago, year and a half ago, and I was giving up my old wedges to uh, a friend, a friend of the show, actually. Um, and the bet was if Scotty Scheffler wins, that person is going to pay me. Uh, a sum of money for for the wedges. If Scotty Scheffler doesn't win, he gets the wedges for free. Okay. And um, you know, I I stuck with stuck with Scotty. He was the better player. He was the favorite to close it out on Sunday. Um, and and he lost. So <laughs> he owed you I, one, is what you're saying. So uh, you know, not only did he did he win to get my or my first win here on the two way miss, but um, you know, if you're if you're listening, Scotty, you, you owe me you owe me 150 bucks. <laughs> that's just a drop in the hat for him, bud. That's that's something that falls out of his pocket after yeah, he puts how, his pants in the laundry. How about how about the caddy? In the since November of 2021, he's made what, 3.5 million dollars carrying the bag. That's, yeah, and who, uh, isn't it um isn't it Bubba's old caddy, Ted Scott? Somebody, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, so, he uh he picked a good one. Yeah, so good good for Scotty. I'm I'm glad I'm glad we could get this this victory together. Yeah, so let's talk about the players. I have an I've heard an interesting take on this, and before we kind of get into the leaderboard, or maybe let's get into the leaderboard, and then I'll bring this point up. So Scotty wins by five. Tyrrell Hatton shoots an unbelievable back nine to get to second place by himself. Makes himself like, I think like $1.4 million in nine holes <laughs> or something like that. Uh, I mean, again, Hoagie third, Victor Hovland, I guess tied for third. Good for him. He didn't kind of melt away. Hideki was someone we mentioned on the podcast tied for, yeah. you know, finished fifth. Yeah, I think you threw Hideki. I out did. There. Yep. Minwoo Lee, again, he kind of trailed off. He shot plus four in the final round. Not a good day for him. Whoops. Justin Suh, Cam Davis, Sung J.M., Homa with a tied for six, Justin Rose, David Lingmurth, Morikawa, who started the week off really well, just kind of yeah. faded to nothing. Svensson, Bezadenhut, McCarthy, Ricky Fowler, Adam Hadwin, like Xander Shoffley, like, Jordan Spieth, I guess, with the top 20. Cantlay with a T19. (laughs) Finau with a T19. Jason Day with another top 20. But, like, someone made a good point, and it was the first time I've actually sat down to think about it. This, I think, was the first time we missed having the live guys in the field. 
Ooh. Purely from a golf perspective. Sure. Like sure. just a quality of golf. Like if you think about it, Scheffler has obviously played himself into a household name. Yeah. Tyrrell Hatton, people know him because of his antics more than his winning. Right. Hoagie, again, like golf sickos know who that is, but like the casual fan doesn't know him. Victor Hovland, again, has won some Puerto Rican opens and, you know, Hideki obviously is a very popular player. But if you're just looking in the top 10, there's one, two, three, four, four, four guys out of the top 10 who are like kind of household names. I'm including Scheffler, Hideki, Homa, Justin Rose. Like as as a name that people who aren't crazy about golf might know off the top of their head. Yeah. But like the rest of these names are just not impressive names. Um, and I don't know. I'm curious to get your reaction to that because it was a it was a point I hadn't heard in a while. And as we come into sort of the first major season where these guys technically they've been allowed, they the every major has said you're allowed to play. Mm-hmm. So we will see a certain conglomerate of them in all four of the majors. But I just, I, when I thought about it, it was a very interesting point that I was like, man, this leaderboard probably would have been a lot more fun. If Cam Smith was here, the reigning champion, Dustin yep. Johnson, Brooks, even, you know, I could care less about Patrick Reed or Bryson, but like they're guys that people know off the top of their head, Sergio, right. you know, yeah. I just, I don't know. It was the first time that I was like, hmm, that might not be a bad take for the first time ever since this whole live thing has kind of started. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, you you do these elevated, these elevated events, you know, the players, they say, oh, it's the, it's the fifth major. So who do you want to see playing in these tournaments? And uh, yeah, I agree with that a hundred percent. I mean, you miss you know, not that not that Phil Phil's game is anywhere near able to compete, but you miss seeing him out there, and 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 definitely Dustin Johnson, yeah. um, Brooks Kepka. Um, I could you know care less whether Bryson's there or not, but I know for other fans, whether it's cheering for him or not cheering for him. I mean, least, yeah, Cam Smith. At least it it brings an, a, another dynamic where now you have this huge event. And you just go through that leaderboard list and it just, it just deflates. Yeah. Like, okay, Scotty won by five. And then, I mean, what, what, what else is there to excite you? Yeah. And, um, you know, it puts that much pressure on these other guys to perform. You know, you have John Rahm leaving because of an, an illness, you know, whatever that ended up being. You have, Spieth not playing great. Justin Thomas not playing great. Uh, you know, Roy McIlroy looking like a, a weekend weekend warrior out there, but not actually playing the weekend. You know, just um, it, it puts a lot of pressure on these remaining top names that we have left to perform, and especially on these these bigger events where you know if you had those live guys in the mix that at least saturated the field more with top, top name, high quality players. And again, we're Uh, talking about 10 guys from live. We're not talking about the other 38 guys that they throw out there who are just nobodies. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, you have the allure of the majors and they're going to get the play in the majors. I hope they come Mm-mm. in form. Yeah. Like, right. I, hope, I don't know. I hope how. They, yeah. I, I hope they don't all, you know, play terrible. Like it, it's because we're only going to see that unless you're watching. Yeah. What, the, the CW, yeah, on the, tape C- del- <laughs> the CW app <laughs> and, and watch them on tape delay. Yeah. You're, you're going to be, this is going to be your only opportunity to see a Dustin Johnson, hopefully in, peak form because it is a major and yeah. you know brooks kepka if he's finished whining about his knee uh 
back in some type of form. Yeah. And and Cam, you know, Cam Smith, like we were just the guy getting was the into hottest Cam, golfer on the planet. Yeah, we're we're just getting into his peak, and then all of a sudden he's he's gone, taken away, you know, taken away from us. Yeah. Um, so no, that's that's a good point, and and I think you'll notice it more and more in these bigger tournaments where you're just like, oh shit, like these guys are there's you know, and it's and it's gonna take it's going to take a while i yeah. think before some of these other guys that one they need to play well enough and two it's going to take a long time for these other guys to become household names i think right yeah. so you get to to know them and to like oh that's uh that's so and so yeah he's great right you know? yeah it was uh, just an interesting point that got brought up and it was the kind of the first time that i thought it was kind of actually right yeah was, and again i haven't really i haven't felt anything to those guys not being around in tournaments right up until this one yeah because these these bigger tournaments these harder golf courses just they just annihilate so many guys yeah and with Zalatoris not didn't play particularly well like fitzpatrick's coming off an injury like even the guys who were kind of on the fringe and are now sort of in this top 25 top 20 guys Nobody really showed up. Yeah. And you expect, you know, you expect Sunday to be, you know, okay. Scheffler's in the mix. Obviously Scheffler's winning. Uh, Rory should be in the mix. What's John Ron, John Rom should be there. You know, you're waiting for just, you're waiting for just all these guys to be there yeah. in these, in these big tournaments. And it's just, it, it's too often a letdown. And like I said, you don't have that field where, Okay, uh, you know, Justin Thomas isn't playing well, but um, you know, Cam Smith is. So yeah. we, you know, there's no trade off. Now now it's just like you don't have these top these top guys that are left and you just fall off a cliff. Yeah. Yeah. And again, true to brand, I picked Justin Thomas, who played absolutely terrible. <laughs> so you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Way to way to keep things rolling That's right. here. We don't if we you're gonna to if you're good. gonna zag, I gotta stay on the zig. You know what I mean? Yeah. I gotta I gotta yeah. toe the company line here. Yeah, we don't we don't want people to think we know what we're doing. Yeah, right. Exactly. Got to keep them off the scent for a little bit longer. Yeah, and uh, yeah, just one more point about the players, man. Just watching watching, uh, man, watching that island green. Like that was that was crazy. It was, you know, isn't it? Just. It's it's amazing how these guys it continues to bat like be just have no clue like it's so gimmicky so yet it continues yeah. to just deliver every time yeah 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 so it's uh, listen what, it, they've they severely sort of backpedaled away from like the circle jerk that this thing was. You know, like the PGA Tour kind of backed off it a little bit. Like they took away that stupid golden boy. You know, they haven't quite leaned into, you know, things that other people find entertaining. But they certainly tried to be less like, look at us. Look at all the cool stuff we do. Yeah. And all that. Like it was severely toned down this time, which I think was much better. They kind of pull an Augusta where they have presenting sponsors who make it a limited commercial offering. So it's one of the best viewing experiences of the entire golf calendar because of that. And if, again, the la like we've just talked about, we need these guys to step up and play well. Yes, please. So last thing I wanted to talk about here is that, I mean, Scotty has to be your favorite for the masters, right? Yeah. I, I mean, mean, who else uh, yeah, you could, you, you could you, still say Rom cause he still yeah, plays yeah. incredibly well there. You have to say Rom, you know, and then, and then, yeah, you have to say Sheffield, you have to say Rom, and then you have to feel terrified about Rory. <laughs> and like even Jordan, like, and even Jordan Spieth, like these guys just yeah. come to this place and it's different. Yeah. And, you know, Rory being this is the last one he needs for his Grand Slam. You just, you're just, again, you, I just am waiting for him to 
get just that much better than everybody else. Like he was, I mean, God, that was 15 years ago. Yeah, 10, right. 10, you know, that was forever ago. If right. you really look at the numbers, like that was forever ago. Yeah. And you're just waiting to, to, to be like, when is he just going to be better than everybody again? Yeah. And I know he was in contention at the, at the Arnold Palmer. You know, that was one of the best leaderboards we've had in, in a while on, on a Sunday. Um, but now all of a sudden, you know, you're, I'm terrified for him because I think he was my pick for the Masters. And now I'm, I'm terrified because he's in his own way now. He can't get off the tee, which is the strongest part of his game. So Yeah, you got to um, think... Rory's being a little bit hindered by this whole live golf, the PGA tour changing up what they're doing. Rory has become the face of this stuff. Mm -hmm. He's the one, he's the guy that everyone wants to interview with tiger, not being around anymore as much. Rory is the guy, Rory's the guy in all these meetings. And I think he admitted, which he is always very transparent. Um, and why people love talking to him. He's like, man, I would really love to just be a golfer for a little while. Yeah. Like all this stuff has been, ta- it's clearly distracted him and clearly taken away from him focusing on his golf game. Yeah. So what do you do? I mean, you know, do you consult like, maybe I mean, you, you got to consult Tiger, like, hey, how do I handle this? Or, you know, I think call- now that it's over and it's kind of done, like, and they announced the sort of changes that are happening, I think he can get back to it a little bit. Like, look, he's not, he's not new at being a super duper star. Like it's been a while. I just think this particular week, if we're just talking about the players championship was particularly taxing and we saw how he could play well at a hard golf course at the API. And that's not something Rory typically does. He typically doesn't play really well at really hard golf courses. Mm -hmm. So he did that. I mean, again, he couldn't make any putts, but he played well. His wedges were fair, were good. His driver was working. I think this particular week, he just got really in the weeds of all the other stuff. And you could yeah. see there was a clear sort of lack of focus. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, it, it might play in because he's so transparent and does give such sometimes long winded and heartfelt answers. Mm-hmm. He might be spending more time talking and thinking about his, answers yeah um where you know maybe you Mm -hmm. you know in those situations you need to pull a tiger and you say give two three word answers and and move on with with your day so yeah i could i could definitely see rory um you know hindered just by the extra mental effort that it's taking to yeah right like you said be be the face of this whole thing yeah so i i really hope he Man, I I because I want it for him. I, I really do. Like it refocus. He's take a these good, next this is one of those weeks. rare rare cases where he's a good enough player. Like Rory McElroy should have a career grand slam. Absolutely. He's that otherworldly talented. And if like if Tiger Woods doesn't exist, Rory might be the greatest golfer any of us has ever, have ever seen. Given his size and how far he hits the ball and just how he won those majors way back when, like a bold statement. I mean, just think about it. Like in this generation, if tiger doesn't exist, his prime, his prime was better than most yeah. people's prime. If tiger doesn't exist, like Phil is the greatest golfer we've ever seen, you know, or at least for our lifetime, Phil is the greatest golfer yeah. we've ever seen. Yeah, you you just you look at yeah you look at Phil and and Ernie Els and, and Ernie David, yep. David, David yep. Duval just in a whole different light without exactly. And I think you look Tiger. at I think you look at Jordan Spieth in a different light. I think you look at Rory McIlroy in a different light. The ability I think you look at Brooks Kepka. I think you even look at a guy like Jason Day who was able to reel off three majors in a what two year span, you know, I think like those number of majors become so much more impressive 
yeah. if well, you Jason, don't have yeah. like Tiger Woods up there. Jason Day has won, but he but he had that season where he won like everything. That's right. Thank you. Yeah. But like I, I said, Brooks, and then said Jason, and then I put Brooks's right. majors into Jason Day's stats. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> but no, you're right. Rory's when Rory is at his absolute best, he is that much better than everybody. Yeah. But you're just like, shit, man. It's been forever. Yeah. Like, and somebody that's not, you know, there's no major injuries. There's mm-hmm. no major, you know, scandals. There's right. no, so it's just like, what happened? Like, what, ha- <laughs> what yeah. happened? Yeah. To, to be that, to be that dormant that long and again I, I say dormant and i know he's won a ton of money i know he's won some tournaments but these guys and, and i think Roy will tell you they worry about i mean majors now yeah. he has what three fedex cups yep so i'm not obviously a hall of fame career an amazing player but majors it's been 10 years almost close eight to that years yeah, yeah. You know, since since we've we've had a major, and it, I, I just I hope he gets back to some level of dominance because he is that much better than everybody when yeah. he when he puts it all together. Yeah. So I think Scotty is kind of the clear favorite at Augusta, coming off winning it last year, has playing how he's playing. He just has to be. He is the best all around golfer. I mean, again, I think you have to still add Rom in that conversation with the way Rom started the season. Those two guys are just very good at all things golf related. And I think either one of them could win. Yeah. So it'll be very interesting in the next couple of weeks as we get closer and closer to hearing that song play oh in our gosh. ears. Mm. Mm. Yep. Just close your eyes. Think about it. <laughs> All right, so congrats to Scotty. Congrats to you on the pick. Uh, everyone will be waiting with bated breath on the Masters, you know, pick to uh, see if you can do it again. So it'll be fun. All right, next thing we wanted to talk about. This is just more of a goofy thing that oh, oh it entirely fascinates us. So I told you that you were. I told you that this was on you. You were going to have to, you know, take a look at things and and tell the people what's going on, but. There's a story in Tigerland that neither of us like, but it's happening. So kind of give the people a a general little sense of what's going on here. Oh, man. Just girl, girl trouble, man. This guy is, uh, he's been on a pretty shitty streak for the last, (laughs) the last decade plus. Yeah, yeah. Um, Oh, my gosh. I think. You know, as a purely just what the hell situation that I think I sent you. The first thing I saw was Tiger Tiger takes girlfriend to the airport, tells her they're going on vacation to get her out of the house, leaves her at the airport and changes the locks at his Florida home. Oh, man. And I think my my caption with letting you know was i please please let this be true because it's just what the hell what are you talking about now it yeah it's just it's a like this guy as private as this guy tries to be he sucks at it yeah he can't do this right he's not good at this part and i was thinking you know i was thinking too like everything he's been through thank god for him most of that went down like pre internet yeah explosion. it was yeah Twi- it was twitter, like yeah twitter yep twitter tiktok instagram like yeah. could you imagine all the shit he pulled in the early 2000s if technology if people were if, just if, chucking their phones up at him when they see him coming if, out of a yeah, hotel at 3 a.m yeah, yeah. If, if social media yeah and, right and, and technology was where it's at today. Yeah. Like, damn. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've just heard, she, you know, there, and 
again, they, they've been together for six plus years, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend. I don't think there was any, there wasn't a marriage. No, um, yeah. She was the manager of his restaurant down the street from his house. I, um, and, you know, they struck up a, a relationship and uh, there's just some weird things coming out about like the paperwork that they signed. Yeah. You know, she she's claiming that she signed a, a 11 year uh, tenancy agreement where she was allowed to stay in his house no matter what for 11 years. And, you know, obviously it's only it's only been six years. So yeah, now right. She's like, well, it obviously means I get, you know, I should get 30 million dollars. Um, yeah, she's trying to expunge her non-disclosure agreement, which, um, you know, you would hope that this situation isn't, isn't true, you know, based on trying to get that nullified due to some, some sexual. Yeah. For any lawyers, use, that is all, uh, that is all alleged. Yeah. We are not reporting anything or no, saying no, anything happened. Is, so yeah, you, you hope, you know, you hope that peace doesn't come to fruition but right could you imagine if her nda gets expunged and she could give whatever interview or whatever book deal yeah right and tell what the last six years mm -hmm. of life was like with with tiger and especially going through the leg injury, the rehab, the the DUI, the the just and everything we don't know about. Yeah, like could you imagine that? Could you imagine that interview or that book if she just went, you know? Oh, it's for <laughs> sure a book. You know what call up? Uh, what's his name? Shit, shit, nut or shit, nut? What ship nut? Ship nut. Who's yeah. who's who's Phil's buddy? Like, hey, yeah, I I got a story for you, buddy. Yeah, that would be a book that she'd milk for nine months. Oh my gosh! So, just a crazy situation. It's, it's like, dude, like, stop sucking at this part I so think, bad. Yeah, I think this is where we see the. This is what happens when your mind has been solely focused on one thing since you were four years old. And when your main influence in your life, I understand Earl Woods is dead. I'm not trying to like shit on a dead person, but like Earl, Earl Woods wasn't a great dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> like go not just Google Earl Woods and you will find plenty of actual articles Written about him like as a womanizer, as like a nutball, like some not great stuff right. for Earl. And when that is your main role model, and then your brain hasn't thought about anything but golf at the highest level since you were five, it's like, no, he does. Like we've said this a million times Tiger Woods doesn't have social skills. No, mm -mm. which is why he handed a tampon to someone on live television in 2023. Right. Thinking no <laughs> one's going to see this or be offended yeah. by this. Yeah. Everybody, everybody will think it's funny. Guys. And listen, I'm not making an excuse for him. He's just he doesn't understand this stuff. He doesn't get it. Mm -hmm. Any book or article that you read about sort of the in-depth life of him like the dude plays Call of Duty nine hours a day and then still thinks like jokes that have the F word in them are the funniest thing he's ever heard. He's like a 12 year old yeah. who's got a billion dollars. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it just doesn't, it just doesn't work out. It doesn't go well yeah. in and, these and kind you, of adult situations. Right. Cause you see these other, other, people that don't really have a childhood because they're so focused on. Yeah. So now, so you're right. Like they have no idea how to handle it in, in adulthood. And you're right. You're like you're acting like a 12 year old. Yeah. And you're 47 years old. Right. Um, and have more exposure than any athlete in the past since yeah. Michael Jordan, essentially. But at the same time, one of the most protected athletes of all time, we don't know anything but yeah and that all about, adds that all adds up to this yeah 
And so, so look, we truly hope that nothing illegal or abusive happened. If she's just looking to like stay in a house, tiger, give her a million bucks, buy her a nice house. I think they, you know? I think he, I think he did. I think he, she had a house down the street. I don't know, down the street or something. There's, all right. There's, there's got to be a way. To, there's got to be a way to figure this out. But yeah, I mean, it's just, and this is the last thing that he probably wants to be dealing with. Again, oh, yeah. leading leading up to the Masters, you now have your exactly you know, what you just said. Like, of course, he doesn't want to deal with it. He left her at the airport. This yeah. is how he thinks it's okay to handle this yeah. situation. We're, we're going on vacation. This I'll is be how right, I'll be right there. You go on ahead. This I'll is how right he there. thinks these situations are handled. You know what I mean? Like this yeah, is what yeah. he thinks. So again, we sin- sincerely hope that yeah. nothing illegal or abusive happened. This is just going to be another one of those stories where you're just like. Man, like I wish it, he had. I wish he had had just like a little bit of a childhood, and like just grown up a little bit. We could have saved so much golf time. You know, if you're if you're like Justin Thomas's wife or like Jordan Spieth's wife, are you like no? You may not. Like, can I, can I go? Can I go play with Tiger today? Yeah. No. <laughs> you may. You may. My not. wife hates Roy McIlroy for canceling his wedding like a week before it happened. Stop it. Yeah. Are you being serious? Yeah, I'm being dead serious. My wife. Every who, time she sees Rory Mac, she yeah, my wife does not watch golf unless I have it on. Stop it. Every time she sees Rory McIlroy, that that guy's a scumbag. I'm like, oh what are you, a scumbag? Like, what are you talking about? That is the most fascinating thing because that is exactly what my wife says every yeah. single time. She's like, I can't believe he would leave her. At like I was like, you didn't leave her at the altar. It was like a week beforehand. Nope, doesn't matter. That's amazing because that is the exact. That's whew, boy. That's that's weird. We should have them. <laughs> maybe they could come on and hash out. That should be a special episode. Again. Yeah, that'll be a special that, episode. That is exactly what my wife says about Rory. Yeah. <laughs> and then that's I'm like, weird. I'm like, would you have rather him have gone through it and then divorced her? Like, I don't understand the question. Yeah, well, at least she would have got some money out of it, I guess. Yeah, well, good for Rory then. <laughs> That's funny. That yeah. is the exact conversation. And then I won't, I won't tell you what she says about Tiger. That's a, yeah, right. That's a whole yeah. That's a whole, That's a whole, other, whole uh, different conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we hope it works out. I mean, well, I, I guess, I just, or it just works itself out. You know, it just, it, it's just. Re- ridiculous like yeah. of all things that stuff comes out where you know, what's she gonna do she gonna live in the house for the next five years Yeah, right Not, isn't that like, weird for you like yeah i don't understand what, it sometimes i don't understand what you, it what are you talking about so she's asking for 30 what do you what do you give her to just go away half 15 is more <laughs> more than enough for a person who doesn't work but and at this point too it's just like dude like what what are you trying to get out of? Like, she's life? just mad. So she's and just trying to, she's just trying to stick it to him. But you know, you're, 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 you guys are older in life. You, you've been together for six years. It's yeah, like, right. what, what at that point, like what, right. What's the point of this? Happened? Can we just be adults and like move on? But, but what happened in the first place? Right. Like you, you, you know, his history, you know what it's going to kind of be like. Yeah. Like, right. Like, and the, and he, and you've been through it for the last six years. Like, why are you breaking up? Like what? Yeah. Who knows? I'm sure we'll, I'm sure we'll find out. All right. Well, let's end the podcast on a very boring, not as exciting note. Okay. (laughs) So final, final little segment of the night here. So the USGA and the RNA a couple of days ago came out, that based on their distance study, which has been going on for six years now, maybe even longer, they have determined that at the highest level of golf, so the highest level of professional and amateur golf, that they will be putting into pl- putting into place a local rule golf ball, which 
at the top swing speeds of professional players will go about 10 to 15 yards less. Wow. Um, so if you want to read about this more, like just go search new golf ball. Like you'll find a million articles, a bunch of really good podcasts. No laying up had a great podcast. The fried egg had a really great podcast. Uh, talking to course designers, talking to players, talking to amateurs, talking to a bunch of people. Couldn't recommend that one enough. If you want to really like deep dive into this, this is a this is a very quick generalization just to sort of get our reactions out there. Um, so again, this is not a worldwide rule. The P, the RNA, and the USGA will. It sounds like be implementing this. In not until 2026, let's say, let's put that out there now in the open championship and in the PGA championship and possibly other USGA, very high level, uh, amateur events moving, you know, in 2026, um, the majors outside of, you know, Augusta and the U S open, haven't had, uh, or again, sorry, the U S open and the open. Cause the U S open is run by the USGA, excuse me. The PGA championship is run by the PGA of America. So two different things. My apologies there. So no word from Augusta, no word from the PGA championship on how they feel about this. If they'll be sort of implementing their own ball. There's been a lot of speculation out there that Augusta is going to sort of say, Hey, when you get on property, this is the ball you use. And everyone uses the same ball. Wow. Because I don't know if you've seen the pictures of where they've moved 13T back to. Um, but they've pushed it back 50 yards. They had to buy a bunch of property up to be able to put a T back there. Um, and that continues to happen at a bunch of golf courses all around the world that are trying to host these high level events that they just they don't have the space for them. And it's a big part of why the USGA and RNA came out. This is because it's not sustainable to keep making these golf courses bigger and bigger and bigger. It costs more money. It costs more resources. It takes more time. Like all of those things just aren't sustainable. So I'm, I'll give you my opinion. And again, players have come out and said, this is ridiculous. They don't know why. Obviously equipment companies are coming out against this or most of them because they don't feel like making a new golf ball for people or for the professionals. Um, and some of them come out. This is the argument I think is stupid. People are coming out and saying, well, the great thing about golf is that you can go to your local pro shop and buy the same driver that I use. Like if I'm Justin Thomas, it's like, no, I can't. I can't go to my local pro shop and buy the same wedges that you have. I can't go to my local pro shop and buy the same ball you use. Like Titleist is making you a ball just for you. <laughs> it's not the Pro V1X I have in my trunk right now of my car. They're not the same thing. Your irons are not the same as my irons. They're yeah. not. So this whole thing that like people only play golf because they can like hit off the same tees we do and play the same equipment. It's like, dude, you're living in a fantasy world. If you don't realize that you're not playing the same stuff as your favorite golfer. I think the good thing is, is they're not looking to like create a worldwide thing because amateur golfers should be able to hit it as far as they want to guys who just go out and play on the weekends or a couple days a week, hit it as far as you want to go nuts, man. No one cares. Like, go nuts. But if you're saying that it's going to just have to start rolling this back because I think it will become a bigger and bigger problem as we keep going forward. Great. I don't think golf courses should have to start buying up houses around them to make their tees longer. Like, so what? You're going to hit it 15 yards less. Who cares? Who cares? Like yeah. in all sports, the professionals use different equipment, have access to things that amateurs don't even couldn't even sniff at. Like there's a huge difference between the professional game and amateur game of all sports. 
in baseball, you don't use a wooden bat till you're in the majors. College baseball still uses aluminum bats. Like, and you're going to complain about losing 15 yards on your golf ball? So, I got to sneeze. Oh, God. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think players are kind of being little whiny babies about this. And I understand why manufacturers are going against it. Like, I get it. They don't want to spend more money to create this golf ball. Fine, whatever. But the argument that, like, golf only survives if people can play the same thing that I play is a bunch of BS. What's your initial thoughts about it? Well, I think Jack Nicholas has been talking about this for years. And Ever Tiger since. has been a big proponent of the, the professionals using different equipment than amateurs. Yeah, and, and specifically the ball. Yes. I know Jack Nicholas has been all yep. over this. Yep. Because this is this is this is just an increasing has been an increasing issue. And we talk, oh my gosh, the you know, such athletes and they go to the gym and this and that. Which helps. Of course it helps. Sure. But but guys, it's it's the equipment. Yeah. Like, it's the equipment. That's what's making these golf balls go so far and so straight. That's, you know, the equipment and the golf balls keep everything so straight. You know, it allows these guys to swing as hard as they possibly can. Yeah. And there's no and, consequence. And there's, yeah, there's not really any, any consequence. I've seen, you know, the, these, <laughs> these golf balls are so filled with technology you can see you got you see guys hit out of three inch thick rough and it hits the green and still has backspin on yeah right like that's that shouldn't be a thing right so and and you're right just for the sustainability of the golf course because not only are you buying up properties to make new tees but then you're buying more gas because those track those you know mowers have to Cover you gotta, that much you gotta more get property. that much more water back there you like. need that much more water you need that much more sod Be, but and, and i i again for the for the amateur golfer you're 100 percent right hit it as far as you can yep keep the pace of play moving yep. go nuts and go and and go nuts but yeah i don't necessarily need to see guys hitting 365 yard right drives i don't need to see that yeah because you know and this is more you know on the carry like these courses are still so these balls are still going to roll out 50 yards 30 yards yeah um i don't need to see a 340 yard carry right uh, and uh, because because the ball's doing it so yeah. if, if you know, and the whole, you know, like the Augusta situation, get on. That would be company that would immediately sue that. You know, their golf ball logo isn't going to seen anywhere. Well, that they don't have an agreement with Augusta National. Yeah, Augusta so, National is a private golf club who so, has um, rules about everything. What it what does they get? What is it against their right to say when you step on property? This is the golf ball you'll be using. Yeah. Um. I so I I agree. Um. Because you know that would be like you know the, the technology and the equipment just keeps getting better and better and better. You know, like other sports, that would be like allowing you know, professional baseball players to use an aluminum bat right. or which use is a absurd or, or, a, or a, you know, a corked bat right. or, right. you know, that'd be like the NBA lowering the rims to nine feet. Yeah. And I, I really like that people are making the comparison, like swimming took out those stupid shark suits that made that yeah. they were breaking world records by like three seconds Yeah, because of these swimsuits track and field mm -hmm. like regulates the cleats people wear, you know, so that they don't have a certain amount of bounce. Even the NBA has regulations on shoes. Yeah. Like these things happen. Like there's regulations about stuff so that the game doesn't become unrealistic like all the time. Yeah. And I think it was, you know, such a, such a, uh, you know, one of these desperation things for golf over these couple, these last several years, you know, people just want to hit the ball far. Yeah. 
Like that's, I mean, that's the best part. You pull out a driver and you crush it. Yeah, but, but that's the thing. If but you for the the amateur level, that's fine. Exactly. But not, not your, not your tour pros. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um. So, I just hope you know. Obviously, that'd be that'd be. You know, like. I'm assuming Liv won't have to have to do that. No, <laughs> they are they're not governed by the USGA and or RNA. <laughs> they can uh, do whatever so, they want to. You know, they'll they'll that they'll use that as a recruiting tool. Like, yeah. hey, you know, we're not against hitting bombs. Oh my god, come they're on, they're come past, on over. Their past hype video for like the CW partnership was like a <laughs> steady cam walking through a hotel hallway. Did you see this? I dude, I you need I, to go I, find it. <laughs> it's literally they're in a hotel ballroom hallway and there's just flashing strobe lights and like six people it's like people people six people six people six people and they're like Wee! you know it's so yeah. stupid Perfect. it's so dumb oh Perfect. gosh all right well we will continue to kind of keep everybody updated uh you know as more of this stuff information comes out Again, it's going to be a long time till this is actually put into play. But, you know, there will continue to be comments and who knows, changes, you know, alterations to it. We don't know. Again, yeah, if you want to, if you want a deeper dive, like go just Google it. We're not going to get into the weeds of all this stuff, but. Yeah, I think, I think uh, Paul Azinger, uh also had his his idea of making a. um. Uh, what it, what the the t the t length it had to be you know go back to the the short the short wooden yeah. tees mm -hmm. um which i mean again that would that would work that would um but no, i think i think the golf ball thing it, it makes it makes sense mm -hmm. and, and I, i'm i'm okay with it i'll be i'll be curious to see yeah, you know, it'll where, be where it goes over the next what two three years. Yeah, very. It'll be very interesting. All right, everyone. Well, that does it for our show this week. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. We appreciate every single one of you that continue to follow the podcast. Uh, you know, if you have some other golf sickos in your life, share it with them. We are on all the podcast platforms: Spotify, Apple. Amazon, Google, wherever you find your podcast, you can find us. We are on YouTube. Just search the Two Way Miss Podcast. We will pop right up there. Every podcast for the past, oh man, almost year, year plus, has yeah. been up on YouTube. So you can take a look at it that way if you just want to see our beautiful faces. Uh, continue to follow the network at BNB Podcast on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter, BNB Podcast, also at the Two Way Miss. Follow this beautiful guy at Fairbanks C23 on Instagram. You can follow me on Twitter at Biggs Regs with a Z. Uh, thank again. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. We appreciate all of you, and we hope that you all have a good night. And we will see you on the next one. Yeah, swing hard, everyone. Oh, it's not a cut. That's a slice. Now this is a quack hook. Oh, Short wow. into the right rough, headed to the trees. Oh.